other time. Hey, uh, that was hey yeah. Lawrence. Yes. There you are. Welcome in. Hey, I apologize. I don't know how I got a link and somebody sent me to the other space, but it's okay. We got it corrected. Right on, right on. I don't know if anybody else has your number, and maybe somebody else sent you a link. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. The link that I sent you, I actually clicked on it, and then it, it brought me right to my space. So you're in good hands now. Okay. Um, okay. We're, we're waiting on Cal. I'm not sure what Cal is doing. He said he would be here. Um, I told him I would start it earlier. Yeah. I didn't see him here yet, but well, he's uh, probably he expected, should be here any second. He's probably expected 830 or something. Probably. I did tell him I would have it uh, at 820 just a little bit sooner so that we can warm up, make sure everything is working properly. And it is so. OK, but anyway, uh, then, Scoob. I did talk a few minutes with those guys. They were polite. I will say that, you know, I didn't say anything to hurt mothers, but they were pretty. They were polite, you know. Good, good. That's good. Um, so, Scoob, I will not be having speakers coming up at this point. Um, we're just going to ask some questions. Cal was uh, planning to ask a, a few questions. I actually wrote down a few questions, too, from the uh, community and also in the comments. I will do my best once Cal is here and he can uh, kind of take over a little bit. Yeah. Then I can also uh, go ahead and just read comments out because there's going to be full of comments. So, but if okay. you want to uh, go ahead and just start with how does this whole uh, thing started? Why now? Why? What happened? Well, first and foremost, sir, I would like to say that, you know, that was a, a, just a, a, just a, uh, a, just a hooray of madness and, uh, Five or six people had got together, got together, and conspired to send all those malicious emails out uh, to attack the government and Mullins to try to hurt them in any way they could. And uh, some people believed it, some didn't. And uh, you know, I think they kind of pushed Mullins in a corner. I'm just speculating, but Mullins did tell me, and they showed me some of the stuff that was go uh, being sent to them. So I stepped back, I hired some lawyers, we investigated, we know who the parties are, uh, there's been some bar complaints filed, a host of things, there are some hearings been set, I'm sure some of them are going to lose their license, uh, I'm sure that's public information, uh, we got a hearing set uh, next month on the 20th, and as regarding a couple of the attorneys who conspired to do that. Uh, they went way back digging, guy. But let me just say this to you. Um, I've pretty much kind of gone in retirement, Mike, but I still own a large percentage of my company. No one on my, no one within my company are convicted felons, okay? None. Nobody. I wasn't one at the time. So nobody came out. They beat up on Washington, D.C. government. Even though Washington, D.C. government hires felons, convicted felons, my contract was to install the technology on the Chevy boat that the city had purchased. They went through a thorough due diligence. Man, I had to pay $70,000 just to get the insurance to be able to install the technology on the car, okay? When the DC investigated me over 10 months prior to granting me the contract, they made an announcement in the media for anyone that had anything compatible to mine. They had an opportunity to speak up, and so they ended up giving me a sole source contract. So in the course of the time, we spent our own money. We hired people within the DC city, uh, flew my brother and other engineers down to D.C. I covered all the expense, and they were there working. We were doing our job. The test results, everything was positive. They had an independent testing company that was testing everything uh, with uh, Washington, D.C. We had to give them a total blueprint plan of action of every step that we were going to take in regards to the testing. We had route plans to go around the White House because the White House has this uh, technology that could actually shut down cars when you get to the White House. We were testing that to make sure with my technology on it, 
it wouldn't shut the Chevy both cars down because the cars were being used to give out parking tickets around the entire city of Washington, D.C. Please in mind, the city didn't do anything wrong when they done their due diligence and vetted me. It did not show that I had a felony conviction from 23 years ago, okay? During the time, there was a guy, Roger Bowles, which y'all heard in the news, uh, we were doing, I was doing a Porsche and, uh, he wanted the technology to go to Vietnam. He never gave me all the money. He did not give me a Porsche that I kept. They gave me a Porsche. It was in the shop, baseline testing with Element. The car was in his name. He thought the car had the technology on it. He went and got the car out of the lab without us knowing about it. And I guess when he got wherever he was, sir, he didn't see no technology on it. And he got mad, went to the courts in Mississippi. After he knew I was paying the restitution, we have provided witnesses and proof. The purpose of us to put the technology on there and the purpose of us, we had went to, let me make sure, I think it was Volvo and Porsche that came, and they had Googled me and said that I had a prior conviction. So my lawyers went to the DA and the judge and everybody, I had already paid 65000 on the restitution. So the people was concerned. They didn't want to make any announcements with me having a felony conviction. So we got Roger Biles. He agreed to pay XYZ dollars. He gave me the money. I sent him proof that I paid, did what I said I was going to do with the money, made a copy of a cashier's check, sent that check to Roger Biles, his staff, his accountant. There was no problem. Lawrence? Yes, sir. Lawrence, I, I don't want to cut you off uh, about talking about that because I, I know you want to get this, the, that out there. But I think that that has been said before. I don't think anybody is uh, is uh, saying that it, it didn't happen the way you did or anything like that. I mean, uh, there's uh, courts for that and and, and, and all of that. But I meant by – And I respect you, sir. We can cut – kill it. Go on whatever you want to ask. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, we do have some questions and I actually want to get to them. Um, there, what I was asking about why, uh, why are we here? So were you invited to go to the, I guess, to the Mullen facility to put your EMM tech right now and do the EPA test or did you contact them? No, I was contacted. Okay. Perfect. So that 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 tells us that another question and this uh, I, I don't mean to come off as a little bit wrong, but it was uh, asked. Um, so why now and why did you refuse the EPA test when asked the last time we did see pictures of the vans on the dyno? They said they were ready. And I'm just okay. wondering, is that can something you that you can answer or you yeah, cannot? Sure, get sure into? I can. can you uh, hear me? OK. Absolutely. OK, let me display some. That's why. People misconstrue things, okay? Um, that was from plus one eight three three four one seven two two seven four. That was never an issue. Can you hear me, okay, sir? Yeah, I think you went over into the car now. Hold on one second. Uh, someone called me and messed up my. Oh, anyway. Can you hear me now? Absolutely. I hear you loud and clear. All right. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Okay. Very good. Okay. So what happened, sir? It wasn't about I refused to do the EPA test. Okay. What happened was Mullins and I had negotiated a long period of time. Okay. And during the process, a couple of attorneys on my side had some issues with Mullen's attorney. Everybody wants the grievance to be a certain way, okay? By the time that what happened was Mullen's and I already had an agreement set, okay? The lawyers were looking forward to us getting paid the $5 million. You see where I'm going with this? They had a bill of yeah. over $160,000 negotiating with Mullen's, okay? So the lawyers was expected to be paid that week, and when the time came, Mullins came to us and said they want us to do more tests. Okay, we satisfied what Mullins asked us to do. It was not a part of the contract that was negotiated. So what ended up happening was 
Mullis want us to do an EPA test, and that would have delayed the payment for another 30 days. My lawyers was livid and asked me to walk away because there was other deals on the table. You follow me? Okay. That's what happened. There was no bad blood, none of that. Okay. David and I was not in an argument right. or none of that. Okay. So with the call that we have now, I'm already doing good. The companies are taking care of me. I made it clear to them when they called me. No one is rushing them on no payment. None of that. Set the date. We're going to have a deal. So give me something in writing. Set the date. I don't care when it is. We'll come and do our test. And you just pay me whatever we negotiate. It might be a new contract. It might be a non-exclusive. I can't represent that right now. Only thing I can factually represent it to you is that we agreed. I'm going to do the test, which is practice. We know it's going to pass. All we're going to do is the same test, but it's going to be done with the EPA. And they're going to certify. I have done other tests for other companies. I tested the technology the way they want it. Nobody wants the same test. You have to do it according to how they want it. I don't even know what test uh, Muller's going to have me to do when I get there, but I'm prepared because whatever test they're going to have me to do, I'm certain it's no more than what I've already done with a host of other companies as well. All right, Lawrence, a uh, follow-up on that. What vehicles are you uh, going to test? Whatever vehicle they want me to test, sir. Okay, so uh, I'm guessing it is the M1 and the M3, and that's just a guess because I do not have that information. And I don't either. I just told them I'm ready, okay? They know that. We were working on big trucks, okay. vans, everything when I was with Mullins. I worked three months at my expense to prove to Mullins that I could make it work, and I've done that. And they know it's going to work again, uh, so I'm okay, you know, regardless of whatever. Okay, Go and ahead, sir. Sorry, until now, I think it was known that uh, whatever test that you were doing, you had a uh, dyno machine, I guess, brought in, and, and that was being done that way. Is this dyno test or whatever needs to happen, is this provided by you again, or is it uh, no, no. through okay, Mullen let me or say something to source? You. Let me say something to you so we have a clear understanding. The dyno company that came to Mullins that tests Mullen vehicles, they were not my friends. I did not know them. Mullins them agreed on a company to come in and bring it, okay? That was the first time we, everybody ever met those people, okay? They came in, they tested the vehicles how Mullins wanted it, and they and Mullins got the results, okay? Just like now, we're doing another t EPA test. I don't know the company. They're going to tell me who they are. I'm going to come and do it again. There's no, I don't have no and dog in this hunt. They may tell me to come to an EPA company in California. I don't know. They may tell me in Michigan. I don't know, but I will be there, okay? And these uh, results to the EPA test, once they're uh, completed, is this something that you will be getting, or does MA, uh, Mullen Automotive, get Mullen, that Mullen, in order Mullen, to, Mullen, I guess, show everything? Yeah, Mullen gets it by the fact they could have shown the test of the other company independent, even though I owned it. But Mullen had a right to show it to anybody they wanted to. Now, Mullins is going to pay for this test. So, of course, they would own the rights to it. Okay. Awesome. Um, so, another thing. Uh, the black box. I'm seeing a picture going oh, around laughing. on the internet. It's just a, it's laughable. a, a box with, a, with wires coming out. <laughs> is that what it looks like, or what does this look like? Listen, guys, like I said, I can't go on social media and few people. Okay. I don't know where that picture came from, sir. Okay. We've taken a lot of pictures, but you and I both, you don't even have to have an electrical engineering background. You can't take a cable and a box, a 220 box, and plug it up to a vehicle and get the type of results that we got. Okay. There's a lot of other components that come with that. That's the standard cabling in the box that we plug our system in. And that's something that we patent. Now it's professionally done. If you had a looked at the box, we soldered the cables on the box. That's not the way it is now coming in mass production. That was during the prototype testing stage. We use our different batteries, cables, inverters, a whole list of things that gave this car the results that we have. So for someone who never seen the technology, they go get some professional prof uh, professor well, God knows, never heard of, 
he goes on and said, may work and may not. Well, I could answer that question for him. Absolutely not. It would not work with what y'all see in the pictures. So there you have it again. Next question. <laughs> A follow up to that as well. Is there any type of uh, software involved or is it just, uh, I mean, does yes, it come with the motherboard yes, or anything yes, like that? There's, or There's software. You have to have this uh, system to connect it to. Like in Mullins Vans, uh, they would uh, use something like a, a hardware box that they use. That's what we use because, you know, in those vans and trucks, they don't have any software, okay? It's just battery, technology, put in drive, reverse, neutral, whatever. So, of course, we had to have the system design to work with that, okay? Now, if Mullins want uh, software put in there like you have in a Tesla or a Chevy Bolt or whatever, then they would do that. Matter of fact, Mullins said well, if it ever come to that, they would install that in there. But that's not my call, sir. Okay, so you have that right. question answered. Thank you very much, and thank you for being uh, quick with the answers because there are quite a few uh, questions. I'm still going off the list that I Go have. Right there are more coming Go in right in the comments. Uh, the other thing you you mentioned, uh, you're in uh, mass production already. Um, well, we have, well, when can well, we find out? Well, uh, I can reach out to the CEO. I'm not going to represent anything. I'll let the CEO confirm that, okay, of the manufacturing company. They are mass producing uh, the technology. Uh, they had to do the tooling, blueprints, all of that, SKU numbers, part numbers, all of that. So they put all that together. But I read it come from them versus me. So if you allow me to tomorrow, I'll speak with them. I don't think they would have a problem with it. I'm sure they'd be cautious because, you know, people are so malicious. They probably attack the guys, but I'm sure they don't care. It is what it is. It's real. Nobody's hiding anything. Nobody's denying anything. So I'm an open book. But I will reach out to them in the morning and see if they have a problem with it. And if they have a problem with it, I'd rather them tell you themselves, not from me, okay? So right now, I guess, are you working with any other company for these uh, EMM tech uh, units to be installed on other vehicles? Are, oh, of are course, you... several. But it's up to them to make their announcements, okay? And I'm sure they will Absolutely. be making some because if I tell you right now, before we, they wake that company open up in the morning, they might have 300 emails, maybe 25 of them malicious, and the other ones will just be inquiries. And that's one of the problems that the D.C. That. had, you know, when they made the announcement, they didn't like that. So many people were calling, filling their, uh, tying up their call, their lines, trying to inquire about Mullins. And with the saying stuff about Mullins, that wasn't even true. So my thing is this, sir, and, I'm, I'm, and I'll answer any question you want. Listen, I believe in Mullins, okay? And if anybody asks why now, I've always wanted to finish what I started. I know David could only say so much, but it wasn't good to watch the attacks, the malicious attacks, and try to find anything to hurt Mullins by utilizing me. Regardless what your opinion of Lawrence Hart, my technology is not a convicted felon, and none of the people that works with the company are a convicted felon. It's the technology. If you're going to punish me, punish me for something I'm doing now. Not something that happened to me 23 years ago, whether I was innocent or guilty. That has nothing to do with the technology that has been presented to Ford, GM, Hyundai. The list goes on. And they can't lie about it. I got the emails, the whole list of things where I've been, DC, Department of Energy. They can't come out and lie. I haven't heard one company come out in the media publicly and say Lawrence Harris technology didn't work when we met with him and tested it. So that's, as long as that's okay, I don't worry about what the naysayers say or whatever, because it's like politics, sir. Whether you be a Democrat, Republican, or independent, you can do all you can for the world. And there's still going to be people that don't like you, and they're going to find something to complain about, no matter how good you are as a president. Okay, you want to bring a bankrupt, Absolutely. you know, Bankruptcy, whatever. Donald Trump filed bankruptcy numerous times. But when he was in the office, the economy was doing well. So whether you like him or whether you don't, okay? So I'm a person for everybody. But let me just say this to you, 
and I'll let you continue with the questions. I felt the hearts of Mullins investors. And to hear some of the stories where some people, you know, David can't control what people invest in or whatever. But when people lose money, it hurts. And if I can do anything to redeem and help the people that invested in Mullins, because y'all got to look at it. You know, I don't know a whole lot of startup companies that put the kind of money in their startup like David has with Mullins. And for the record, David had asked me to say this. They haven't given me a dime. Nobody's giving me a dime. I'm going by what I see. They got a facility in Tunica, Mississippi. They got a facility in Indiana. They got a facility in Michigan. I seen my own eyes, okay? They got one in California. Not no shabby buildings, nice buildings. They got state-of-the-art equipment. They hired some of the best engineers, the best experts that knows batteries and all of that. And now they can consolidate it with what I have and they're going to be a leading company. They're going to grow. Regardless of how you feel about me, look at the company, even if you don't like David, okay? You don't quit a job because you don't like a co-worker. You keep working. And I understand about the Thanks. splits, but let me say this. I'm for Mullen. Okay, go ahead with your question, sir. Th thank you. Thank you. And uh, and uh, believe me when I say this, and uh, uh, I'm not trying to come down on you or in yeah. any oh, way, that's okay. but... The people that have been in Mullet for a long time, we were all very excited when you came on the scene. The first time, everybody was very excited. A lot has happened since then, and we feel like there was not enough uh, evidence or there was no evidence presented. So I think right now, with what you're saying, it's great. Well, it's great news, I was but in we control are going of to wait. Okay, that's, that's fine, but let me, let me just say this to you, sir. I agree with you 300%. I'm not going to throw any darts at anyone. OK, I don't own Mullins, but if it was left up to me, I would have been just the way I am now. I'm at liberty to say what I answer the question that you're asking me now. But under the Mullins umbrella, if they tell me to shut up while I was under their jurisdiction as what well, their senior vice president of the technology, I have to listen to what the boss says. OK, so hopefully David will allow us that opportunity uh, at this juncture because it's not about a position or a role because I could work as a consultant with them or whatever. But I think, me personally, when you're more transparent and you let the people see it, not just talk about it, but let them see it, I think it'll cut down a lot of this mistrust, people bashing folks or whatever. Some might say, I'm just saying this to boost David stocks. No, listen, I'm quiet until they give me a date to test these products and let the EPA speak for itself. Okay, that's where I am, sir. Lawrence, at this yes, at this point, I think you're dead on. Yeah. I don't think anybody will will be as excited as we once were when you first came yeah. on the scene because we want to see results. And I'm not saying that in a mean way or anything like that, but I think the people do want to see results and, before and, we can and, get excited yeah. again. And I was act, I would ask the people, you guys on this call, you know, I was you guys. I would send them a text. I would send them an email. And say, David, when you do the test, we the investors want to see the results. Not verbal, but the actual test results. You follow me? I would even ask for the previous Absolutely. test results from the independent test company. Show it. I'm not, a, I'm not in opposition of showing it. It was tested at your facility by an independent company. I think if we had done that, and David, if you listen, I'm not attacking you. I'm just, people have a different way to run their company. Me personally, if I got these kind of people invested the kind of money that's in Mullins. Whatever I do, I would show the investors. I would even go back and say, hey, this is what Harris did on the vans. This is the test results we had before the technology. This is the test results we had after the technology. And I would tell the people that my engineers with Mullins was working there right beside Harge. Well, he didn't just go in the building, put on something, then call us over. They all helped him install it, okay? I would be telling him that because he got some good engineers that's working there. And all I would say, Harge is quiet. Now, Harge is not doing no talking. Any announcement that's made from any of these companies I'm dealing with now, let it come from them because they've already tainted me as not being honest because I couldn't talk, okay? So I took the blows or whatever. I don't know why. I don't, I'm not a part of any internal meetings 
with David. Never. I have never even met him personally. Okay. I may have talked to him on the phone maybe twice. Okay. Outside of that, when y'all see news out there, I see it just like y'all. Nobody gives me no inside information or anything. So when I want to say this to the shareholders, just like when I made a statement, it was misconstrued that lawyers apologize for mis misleading share. No, I did not say that. I said if anybody got hurt in any way with Mullins, I'm sorry because that was not my intention to hurt anyone. I have to follow the rules. When you're in Rome, you live by the laws of Rome. So all I'm saying to you guys, this is your opportunity. You took time out of your business schedule to talk to me. I just actually encourage David, Thanks. whatever information that's coming out of what I'm doing, just be transparent with your investors. Don't just let them assume. Thank you. Thank you. Don't let them assume anything. Show it. Show the investors what you did Absolutely. with your vans. Show them the independent test. We didn't pay nobody to go make that up. And if I was the CEO, I would have told my investors this was an independent test company. They did independent tests in D.C. D.C. just not going around giving folks contracts. You, they had to vet me. They vet me thoroughly. And all they could do is find something, you know. But go ahead. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and, and we, we get that. Now we're moving forward, right? We have another uh, test uh, date coming up and that will come up and uh, that will be the, uh, I guess that will prove everything, right? Well, it's already been proven, but they want an EPA test. So, hey, we just rehearse the process. Okay. The there results going to be and the same. Have, huh? Absolutely. We, we have a uh, financial journey. He's finally able to make it. Uh, oh, welcome in financial journey. I'll let you take over. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, how's it going, Lawrence? Hey, how you doing, sir? Doing pretty good. Um, oh, so great. I guess just based on what you last mentioned about us investors reaching out to David and Mullen to, I guess, essentially get the test, EPA test, once it is completed, um, me and you, we kind of had a discussion earlier today on which you mentioned that several other EPA tests, aside from the um, independent one that was done for Mullen, was completed. Um, are you able yes. to share that? Because I feel like, like at this, I, I don't have a problem sharing. I would just let the company share it so that it comes from them. Because you know, I took a beating uh, during that process months ago. But let bygones be bygones. But Lawrence Harge won't be making any announcements other than uh, regarding what I'm doing for the companies. Uh, I had to go and redeem my relationship with Saudi Arabia. Some people was upset that I said something. Some of was okay with it, but that's been done. It's all corrected. Uh, additional uh, major companies come behind the scene is working. Uh, my team is working with them. And what I want now is no more silence. Don't put me out there. Because when, when I went out there before, they said they was going to protect me. And I commend Mullins because Mullins made an announcement before they even hired, pretty much hired me and made the announcement about the deal that I had a conviction on my record from 20 some years ago. So it was obvious I was transparent. The government knew about it, but I wasn't a convicted fellow when I took the contract. So when they came and rescinded my uh, expungement, they made a big deal out of it. Oh, they made a deal with a convicted fellow. But go ahead, sir, whatever question you have. Well, no, I get your viewpoint. Obviously, whatever companies you worked with outside of Mullen, it's obviously up to their discretion to possibly share information but yeah and if they uh, want to share it that's fine because they got shareholders too and it won't be so, coming from me yes so this kind of leads me to my next question and my apologies sure. for joining late so i don't know if this was discussed already but once again uh why mullen i know that's kind of vague but if you clearly have been uh enticing other cust like custom uh, like customers companies whatever you want to call them um why cycle back to Mullen. Well, first of all, let me just say this to you, okay? I didn't like the way the relationship ended with Mullins. I've already explained it uh, on this uh, with the gentleman prior to you coming in. So the investors already heard that story. There was never any bad blood with Mullins. There was people that was against Mullins, was looking for anything to try to divide us, okay? Uh, I'll repeat this again. Uh, Mullins and I had a contract. OK, I fulfilled that contract. I've done everything Mullen asked me to do. 
At the last moment, Mullins asked me to do some EPA tests, okay, additional tests. My lawyers was against that because they were expected to be paid that week when Mullins came about doing more tests. They were already in $160,000 legal fees negotiating going back with Mullins. They asked me to walk away. They wasn't happy about it, and that's what I done, okay? I didn't take $5 million from Mullins, none of that, okay? Since then, I continued to move in silence and work with other companies. I was upset because I didn't like the fact how people were attacking Mullins. Mullins has a lot of facilities. They have great engineers, experts, and all of that. They have the vehicles that they have would do well with the technology that we have. It's now going in production. Of course, companies talk. Who knows who said something to Mullins? But Mullins called me. It was a, court, uh, a representative. It was a cordial conversation. And I basically told him, listen, I'm not out to hustle Mullins for any money. They can take whatever time they need. I'm fine. The companies are taking care of me presently. So whatever date that they set, I said, it can't be this week because I'm having a funeral my father right now, that's Saturday, this week. But I'll be free next week. And Mullen said that they have other vehicles already at an EPA testing site. And they would have to find out from them when they can squeeze me in to do the testing at Mullins. They'll give something in writing. And when we do the test and it's successful, then they'll pay me. Whether it's two weeks, three weeks after I do the test or four weeks, nobody's whining. They'll put it in writing. We'll move forward. And that's where we are right now. Any other information what Mullen's planning to do or how, when, and where? The test could be in California, Michigan. I don't have no idea. I don't even know where the trucks are that's being tested now with the EPA. I'm just representing what's factual and what was represented to me, sir. Uh, I do have a question. Uh, you did say that the EMM tech was in mass production. If so... Uh, do you know what the uh, cost per unit would be? Well, let me just say this to you, okay? Mullins already have a signed agreement with me. And I hope I don't get in trouble with this, where they was going to pay me $1,200 a unit to go in their vehicles, okay? I don't know if they're going to change that. That's separate if they we, we had an option to do that contract or the $5 million. I don't know what David is going to come back and write in with me, but that would be the cost. It would, it would increase the value and the distance of their vehicles and all of that. But we didn't push it because we didn't have, we wasn't at the place where we are now where the products is going to soon be coming off the assembly lines. Okay. The manufacturer did all the tooling. They did all the blueprints. They did all the part numbers. They did all the SKUs for this technology. It wasn't done by me. And they're happy to do it because they're going to make a lot of money. Uh, producing these products, sending them all over the world, not just in the U.S., but out of the country and all of that. So there you have it, the truth and facts, okay? Thank you very much for that. Go ahead, financial. Um, kind of piggybacking off of that, so you mentioned about um, essentially the next steps, so testing with uh, under Mullen's premises. Um, are you planning on or have you had any discussions with that Mullen rep or any, or even when you kind of cease communication with Mullen, is there any new agreement that's going to be coming under the MAEO um, kind of subsidiary at all? Well, I don't know. I can honestly say I don't know, other than they represented that they was going to put everything in writing and send it over to me, and I guess we agreed to it. But based on our conversation, I don't see where there's going to be any oppositions but I don't know the full uh, details of how the agreement is going to be until they send it over to me. And I would recommend that you guys speak with David so they can give you the facts versus so nobody won't try to uh, sever me and David's relationship and say, Lauren said this and David is saying that. So I've learned from the past, but they are putting the agreement together and we have agreed we will do the EPA test. And I assume by tomorrow or the next day, they'll have a date set because they have to get back with the company that's presently uh, testing some of their vehicles right now. And basically the technology works. David is not concerned about if the technology works. They are everybody on the same page. 
They just want the EPA to put their stamp of approval on it. Okay? And that's it. Yeah, no, you just can't go to you just can't go just putting stuff on cars unless you go through the process, you know. Yeah, I think at this stage Millen investors completely would agree as well because even if you do or do not work with Mullen in the future, I think just for official closure, it would be good to have some credible evidence to see if your technology truly does work. Um, so that's why I did ask as far as your previous EPA testing, yeah. because I think you mentioned that you think you did six, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I, I know you kind of answered it saying that you didn't really like and you didn't feel that there was closure with Mullen, but were all of the six that you did complete kind of uh, part of the terms and conditions of that company? Or why, why did you do EPA testing for these six companies? Well, some Mullen? of these companies, it's, it's, let's say like what Mullen want their testing for is for their vehicles. The other companies want it for their vehicles. So it's certain things that they wanted, just like uh, the Saudis wanted a test done, which we done. They wanted to see what the technology worked beyond 125 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So everybody got their own, you know, test requirements. And we're not in opposition to that because if you want to do a deal, you got to do what they ask you to do. So I just want to make sure we're on the same page there, okay? So most of these tests with these other countries is based on the conditions where they're going to utilize the technology in their regions, okay? Like some of them got cold weather regions. They won't test at work that conducted under those type of temperatures and all of that. So that's the reason why, like with Mullins and whatever they do, and I will say that, uh, they have certain uh, requirements. And whatever the requirements that they have is up to the EPA to certify to say, okay, it's okay, it meet the conditions with the application you're going to use it for, and they certify, and now you can place it on the road. Just like the vehicles that come in from China, what might be approved in China may not work in the USA. So that if you're going to be selling in the USA, the, re the EPA is going to require certain criteria for you to meet before that truck can go out on the road. Now, if you're using it on a college campus or an airport where it's not out there in the public, then you can do that because it's not going to require a license for you to take it on the streets. So if everything is like, you know, airports, uh, you know, universities and stuff like that, you can get by with that. But when you're talking about putting a tag on the car and driving across country, charging stations, the EPA requires certain things. And now since a lot of people were just putting stickers in the windows, uh, saying they car do this based on that, now the EPA has changed the laws and they want real-time EPA distance tests. And we were doing that beforehand. So we're not in opposition to whatever the EPA want us to do, okay? And I'm ready for it. I am ready for it. So it's all on Mullins. So nobody has to beat Lawrence, up on me, okay? I have a question here from Brian in the comments, and he wants to know, um, have you let, I guess, Mullen or David Mitry, anybody know that you would be having a space, or are you allowed to talk freely? Are you under any NDA? Or, no, no, no. I'm not on any NDA. As long as I don't discuss Mullen's internal business, and I don't know any internal business, they are aware that I'm having a space call. So we're good. I mean, I can speak down because it's related to the hard technology, and once uh, Mullen uh, set up the EPA, then they would own the right to those test results, and uh, it would be up to Mullen to disclose all of that to the investors. A follow-up question on the production, on the mass production to the EMM tech. Um, where is this being produced? Is it being produced here or overseas? Oh, right in the USA, sir. Awesome. Love it. And uh, one other thing, uh, the same person is asking, uh, and I don't know if you can answer it, but who from Mullen has asked uh, or uh, invited you to do the EPA testing now? Okay. And you don't have to answer it if you don't. Okay, if can you, you be more specific? Uh, you you kind of echoed. Ask me that question again. Sorry about that. He he was asking, uh, so who, who contacted you from Mullen in order to uh, come do the EPA testing? And if you don't, if you cannot answer that question, you do not have to. 
No, I read a, I read a David uh, give you guys that information because there might be a breach of the NDA if I tell that. So I read a David to say that, okay? Absolutely. That is fine. Okay. Uh, Cal, did you have any more questions? I'm going to continue to go through the comments and see what comes up, but there are a lot of comments. Um, I kind of do. So, Lawrence, like we've discussed and had quite a few conversations in the past, uh, one thing that has always kind of stuck with me is your introduction to Mullen. So you mentioned in the past that you were introduced by a insider, and insiders to Mullen are 50-50. Some people like them, some people don't. Are you able to disclose at this point, since you kind of are not connected to Mullen, who introduced you exactly um, to Mullen itself? Okay, like how, well, how let me just say this without uh, crossing the line with anybody. The party that uh, introduced me to David, because, you know, be honest with you guys, I didn't even know of a Mullen that a gentleman uh, came to me. He flew out to my home. Uh, twice we met up. Uh, he indicated that him and David had been friends ever since Death Row record, Suge Knight and all of that. I didn't know that, okay? Um, he was uh, one of the first few investors, according to him. And uh, he introduced me to David. And uh, David told his people. He told them about the technology because he knew about it. Other people that he knew that knew me knew about the technology. They passed it on to David. I was invited to Michigan. Uh, I did my due diligence on Mullen, and I saw how some of the people were attacking him. But Mullen had everything that I always wanted, and that would have the boots on the ground to be able to make, take, take on large contracts. Uh, not with a person like myself with five or six engineers who works for other companies and work for me during their free time or part time. So the deal we had was, we could take on, I told them we could take on some of these big companies and they agreed that they would have people that could help me along the way. Okay. So at that point in time, we was already in, I was already in discussion with Saudi Arabia before David them came in. And then what happened was David them say, well, let him come to our Michigan location in Troy. I came there. I worked with David them for maybe two months. Three, maybe at the most, or maybe two. I don't want to quote because, you know, I I'm, uh, can't remember exactly. But we came in every day, worked eight hours on those vans and trucks with the schematics, getting everything together, understanding the vehicles and all of that at my expense. Then we turned around. We identified an independent company. We didn't care who it was. We had to find companies that would be available that could run tests on the vehicles for like three weeks. And I'm not mistaken, they were charging maybe 20000 a week or more to test those vans at different levels, different speeds, lights on and lights off. All of that I paid for and the engineers. What I didn't pay for was David's uh, engineers who was presently working at his facility. They helped out. They helped us put it together. They helped us take components off the vehicle. And then we tested it. We were there sometime at 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night. And when it proved out, I got the results because David then wanted like a uh, 10, 20% increase. I think we got like a 75% each, each time, several times, and the measurement wasn't the same. So that means this uh, technology could now be installed in their van because there was consistency. If you had to test, it may have done 30%, 30% one time, 40%. And 50 the next time, you're not going to get any approval for that because that's not showing any consistent that all the vehicles will work the same. So all the test results work the same. And then that's when David and I, our people let him know my history, all of that. They vetted. And that's when they gave us agreement and they made the announcement. Okay. That's the real story. Okay. Nobody never mentioned, you know, David gave us a $50,000, uh, deposit. And reason they done that because I was incurring a lot of expenses with those engineers working like that. They gave a fifty thousand. I handled that. that. That helped me with some of my 
uh, you know, independent, the company that was there, and then the five million was going to be paid uh, at the appropriate time when I met all the requirements, and then people started sending malicious letters saying the technology didn't work and this and that, and next thing we know, uh, David said they wanted an EPA test, and I guess some of my lawyers got insulted by it because they had knew they had worked with me with Ford and a whole lot of other major companies, and we had already proven ourselves, and we just felt like David then they were second guessing us because of all of the tax, and they was expecting to be there. Lawrence. Okay, go ahead. Sorry about that, man. Um, uh, so this uh, this is. Uh, this information, I think, uh, has been heard by everyone before. And uh, not to stop you there, but since you brought up the lawyers, I believe there was uh, three different firms that were, uh, I guess, um, were representing you. Is is the same one that when you left, uh, are they still representing you now? And yeah. how do they feel about uh, you coming back? Well, they, they see all the good things are going on, so they don't have any issue with it. But let me just say this to you, okay? Uh, my lawyers, it wasn't a problem that they was totally mad with, uh, Mullen. Mullen had some attorneys that worked for them and they couldn't see, they had difference of opinions with my lawyers. Okay. So when they couldn't work with one of them, I go get another lawyer out of the, uh, you know, out of my pile. You know, I got a, a, quite a few of them. So they was running in issues with them and that's where the confusion come in. I, I didn't fire the lawyers and they didn't fire me. They still worked with me and all of that. They were just having a little complication with Mullins because Mullins was switching up attorneys and they were assuming some was going to go this way. Then another attorney sent an email. They want to do it that way. Then another attorney sent an email. They want to do it this way. So the lawyers was getting frustrated because they wanted to make sure I got paid so they could pay their legal fees. So there you have it, the facts. Okay. Thank you. And I have a question here from Jerry H. And he says uh, to ask LH if he has modified his technology in the last uh, nine months. And does he still claim no engine fires? So have you had to make any kind of modification oh, or maybe yes. you did it because oh, yes. you saw something better? Well, let me just let me tell you why we 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 had we did test two uh, to make sure that the technology uh, prevented the overheating. And that's why we done it with the Chevy Volt because they was having problems. The cars were catching on fire. They would catch on fire during the night, burn someone's house down. The parking structures around the country had prohibited the Chevy Volt from parking in the underground parking because of the fear of that. So when we took we took a Chevy Volt, that's why we picked the Chevy Volt. We didn't just go get an electric car. We went and got a Chevy Volt to put the technology on it and tested for heat and overheating. And Mullins has the test, and they written in the report, never once they had to shut the vehicles down for overheating, never once did the vehicle overheat, okay? So those tests was done there for heat, okay? So people would see whatever they wanted, but they didn't know the reason why we were testing in multiple avenues. So yes, we have done more modifications, and now it's coming out, the final technology is coming out for mass production. We think we don't cover everything for everybody, which we know we have. So now that's where we, that's where we are now. And uh, Mueller's not going to have any issues and no other company is going to have any issues. And that's a good thing, sir. One more thing, and I don't know if the financial journey wants to jump in after that, but uh, uh, so you said, and I just want to make it clear, you did say that there is no NDA, and then you said you were under NDA. I'm not sure if uh, maybe well, you let, just let, let, me explain uh, something to you. let me explain something to you. Regardless, I'm under NDA with Mullen, okay? Uh, what I've seen in Mullen and all of that and what communication thoroughly with David and their internal company I'm not at liberty to discuss Mullen. And in my uh, cease and desist, uh, I'm prohibited of criticizing any of Mullen's uh, staff, which there's no reason for me to in criticize them anyway. Nobody at Mullen's ever done anything wrong to me. And their staff, their employees were super nice. We, I thought we were like good friends. But what I'm speaking of NDA, I'm on the NDA with other companies and the manufacturers, okay? So what I'm saying to you, 
I have no problem with you guys knowing who they are, but I read it come from them, and I don't have a problem calling them. And if they don't want to give you any information, I want them to tell you, not me. Okay? All right. That's what I'm saying to you. And I don't think they would. Uh, I mean, they in the business to make money. And, uh, and, and I can respect the investors. They invest their money. They want answers. So I'm saying until David and I sign some type of agreement, I can speak on my technology. I am not prohibited from speaking on my technology or who I'm doing business with or whatever. I just have to get rid permission from these companies that I'm on the NDA. Now, what I said once again, so there's nobody will misconstrue it or take it out of context. I'm asking you guys to ask David, whatever tests we do and the past test that they have, I would recommend that he show you guys, okay, and let it come from Mullins and not me. And whatever date they set for the EPA, I hope he make the announcement and the time so anybody that wants to be there, if, if it's okay with Mullins, I'm not in opposition for anybody showing up and see what we do. Now you're hearing it from me. Now anything changes, Thank you. come from me, okay? Thank you. And then, uh, uh, Cal, if you have any questions, man, just unmute your mic. I, I'll know you want to ask something. Yeah, kind of have one thing. So, um, once again, I'm kind of cycling back to your departure with Mullen. You did several tweets um, in between while not involved with Mullen, one of which is I think you said something along the lines of that Mullen's going to regret not essentially um, – I guess going through with the deal. Um, what did you? I don't think I. I don't, I don't think time? I don't think I ever uh, said Mullen will we regret. I did make a comment today that some of the people that beat up on Mullen uh, is going to regret how they treated Mullen. You know, uh, thinking that Mullen was scheming and scamming them. I haven't seen anything where Mullen is scheming and scamming anyone. Now, whatever goes on behind the scenes for people trying to hurt Mullen in the stocks or whatever. I don't know nothing really about stocks, so I can't comment on that. But in regards to Mullen, yeah, we did part the part ways. I understand why, but it wasn't about uh, what people try to make it out to be. I just, I just clarified it with you guys that it wasn't a part of the contract to do any more additional tests. We had already done everything that Mullen asked us to do, and these lawyers wanted to get paid. Okay? So... I had to do whatever was in the best interest of what they wanted me to do. And me and Mullins, we didn't walk away fist fighting or bashing each other. So Mullins is ready to do, you know, whatever they want to do and how they want to structure the term of the agreement. I can't speak on that. I haven't seen anything in writing. But we have confirmed they're going to let me know when we're going to do the EPA test. I'm happy to do it. What test they want done, I don't know until I see it in writing. But if you guys got questions about it, I'm asking David and you guys on the phone, disclose it to you guys, okay? A failure is not an option. It's going to pass. But I'd rather you, David didn't say anything. So don't, I don't take a beat and say, it, I said this, I said that, okay? Anything regarding deals, I'd rather the CEO say it. Lawrence Hart is not making any announcements. These guys are not going to be attacking me and dragging me in the mud anymore. Well, whoever they want to attack, they go ahead and do it. If they're mad about they lost money or whatever, I'm not the reason, and I'm not going to put myself out there to be attacked, but I'm just only trying to help, okay? And I'm going to say, Mullen's going to do well. They do that EPA test, they're going to do well, okay? Because it's for Mullen's vehicle, not the vehicle with the companies I'm working with. It's for Mullen's vehicles only, okay? Absolutely. After the uh, the results come out and it is proven, EPA test, everything, all of that, I believe that they will do well after that, but we do have to have that evidence. Um, I did want to ask a question from uh, Tim the Toolman, and he says, uh, um, let me see. Nope, it's not from Tim the Toolman. It's from Dark Brandon. I'm sorry about that. He's asking, that does the technology have a lifespan? Is there a warranty? How long is the warranty if there is one? I don't know if you if you know that yet. Yes, yes, a 20-year minimum lifespan. 20-year. Very nice. Thank you for that. Um, the other question. 
the other question that I have since the financial journey is uh, not ready to ask one yet, um, the Lucid vehicles, did you purchase the Lucid vehicles and are you, did you install the uh, EMM tech on it? Well, first of all, let me say something. We were supposed to purchase, but so much was going on with the, uh, with what was, they were attacking and this and that. So we ended up renting some vehicles and we done some tests there. Uh, so we have proven out, okay? Uh, we have done that among other cars. Now, we do have agreement that's been finalized since everybody's coming back, and they are supposed to be purchasing like four Lucid vehicles. Uh, matter of fact, I'm supposed to uh, go and get my passport next week, uh, which go to Michigan and uh, get, get it done, get my passport in one day. And uh, once they deliver the documents according to where they was, uh, when I was with Mullins, a little change has been made. I'm going to fly to Qatar, okay? Uh, I've never been out of the country. I didn't want to go out of the country. We did send other representatives uh, to, that went to Saudi Arabia, Qatar, all of that. But Lawrence Hodge, if I can get out of it, I'll send my brother over there because he used to be over there working in the Middle East and all of that. But I don't want to go. And we have trained people to do what I can do, so I'd rather them go. And I'm praying that I don't have to go to Qatar. I can keep my boots right here in the USA. And those are one of the companies uh, in the Middle East. I don't want to say anything. Let them say it. They were the ones that had me to do the test to make sure that it could withstand 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Um, when it comes down to it, I know I kind of mentioned it already i feel like uh the, it wasn't fully answered when i asked like asked like ultimately why mullen especially based on all your claims about mass production um, all the other companies that kind of i guess requested epa why do you essentially need mullen well, uh, i know when all, we me, spoke you said me, that you need it for the engineers yeah, but let me like, say this why okay, let me say this to you with all fairness okay you guys didn't even know about a lawrence hard until Mullins gave me an opportunity. Am I correct? Okay. There's a lot of other companies that correct. I worked with. They never went public. They had me on a strict NDA, non-compete. They never made any announcement. Nobody did. And then, and it's not even about no fame, sir. Because when, when we started out with Mullins, I even talked to Mullins, the COO. I said, I really don't want my name out there in the public. I don't want to be attacked or none of that. And then the lawyer said, well, we'll protect you. Don't worry about that. It's not about you. It's about your technology. Well, we found out different. But once you let the horse out of the, uh, you know, out of the, the barn, it's too late. He's out. But Mullins gave me an opportunity. Not only did Mullins give me an opportunity, a lot of these companies that's pulling at me now, despite of what they heard in the media, they wouldn't even be contacting me if it wasn't for Mullins. So out of fairness, People make mistakes. You shake hands like men, and you finish what you started. Mullins called me today, the representative. We were very respectful. She was very nice to me, and uh, here we are. Now, what Mullins do with the technology, what direction it goes in, those are questions for David Mystery and his team. I don't make those decisions, but whatever they ask of me to do, I'm ready to do it on the test. And until they set the date and we go in and do the test, I ask some of you guys, don't beat up on Mullen. They trying to make money. Y'all mess with people's finances. Y'all mess with people that got jobs. They got families. Thanksgiving and Christmas is close by. Give them an opportunity to show you that they're real. Nobody want to see their stocks tank. Y'all don't have to beat up on David. David don't know a whole lot about batteries, but his team do. And trust the process that he hired people to do what they supposed to do. And I think some of you guys are unfair. You expect Mullins to make a major announcement every day. Every day. That don't work that way. Look at the mass production and manufacturing. It took almost 12 weeks. You can't make announcements about that until you ready. And everybody's not walking in signing billion dollar deals every day. I've been working with the Saudis going on 10 months, and we finally coming to a head. 
So we can't go make premature announcements. I mean, maybe I should have kept my mouth closed. I made some mistakes, too. I'm not passing the blame. I should have kept my mouth closed about the Saudi until everything was really ready. And then we could be making these announcements now. But, hey, the damage has been done, and now we can make it right. Mullins and I are trying to do the right thing. And I'm just asking you guys, hey, just give them a chance. Stop looking at all what's not right and uh, what's wrong, but look at what's right. They're doing everything. Hey, Lawrence. Okay, I'm done. I'm done, guy. I won't, you know, go ahead. What's your next question? Thank you. Thank you. The next question is, and uh, the person is asking, and there's actually quite a few people that were asking the same question in a different way. Um, why why want to, uh, I guess, uh, put out a tweet that you're going to do EPA testing? Why not just do the EPA test first and then come out saying, hey, here are the results? That way you have evidence in hand and nobody has to ask, okay. question okay. when. Well, 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 let me say this to you. Mullins got a lot invested. I got a lot. There's a lot of Mullins shareholders believe in me because they believe in the technology. And I don't think they should go another day not knowing what's going on. And that's what we we need to start. Doing. Lawrence. And that's letting the people know. I'm, that. Uh, okay. We about absolutely. To, we about I, I to get do it. Some EPA test. Mullins going to set the date and they'll get the results. Thank you, and we'll go from there because I, I understand that yes, but a lot of uh, a lot of Mullen investors has also lost the faith in in what you were saying. So that's why it's important to get this evidence out first. And I'm not I'm not bashing you or no, anything like not. that, but sir, everybody sir. wants sir. to see me, evidence first. Sir, let me say this to you: anybody that's bashing want to see evidence. They may have legitimate reasons, and they may not. Nobody's upset with them about their opinion. What we're saying is they need to know because they still invested their money. If they didn't believe in Mullins, they wouldn't have invested, okay? We're about to do an EPA test, okay? And let Mullins announce the date and provide real results and not somebody just telling what they heard the tests were. Put it out there and show it, okay? That's all I'm saying. And, I, hey, you won't hear no more from me until we do the EPA test. You won't hear me making no announcements. I'm not doing none of that, okay? Other than we're going to do that EPA test, and I'm just asking your investors, give Mullen the opportunity to show some good results, okay? Absolutely. Hey, and and – I want to thank you in advance because I don't know when you're going to leave. I know you said you were only going to stay about 30 minutes or so. And I do want to thank you for coming up here and, ask, and answering questions and being with us. Uh, financial journey, go ahead, man. I can answer five yeah, questions. No. I'll go ahead and answer five more questions. Bring them on. Okay. I will make this a very complex one. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, okay. So when it, in the past, you mentioned that uh, your technology was fairly easy, simple, that a high school student can do it. Um a, is that still the case? And how does that incorporate? Because in the past, you um, stated that there's like software requirements and well, it depends on the vehicle type. Like, how does that work? To, okay, can a high school student still do that? No, let me explain something to you. The engineers do all the software. All the high school students are going to do is the plug and play. If they can't plug plugs in and inverters and other things in, then I, I don't know how they would have graduated from high school. I mean... A junior high person can do that, okay? The technical side, is for the engineers. So when they come off the line, all of that has already been taken care of. All they have to do is plug and play. And that's what the manufacturers are doing, mass production of that, okay? And this and is more of a set of questions. It not, not, uh, it's definitely not just a cable in a box. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a sub-question, so it's not a new question, just so you know. Um, but... Technically, um, have you made any progress? Because I know you discussed in the past saying that Teslas haven't given you the authorization um, to work on their software. Have you have made any improvement or, I guess, progress for working on Lucid, Teslas, uh, Bolts? Like, have you made any progress? I've made a lot of progress, but, but not on Tesla. Nobody can do anything with Tesla unless they give them permission. You have to get permission from these companies 
before you can go in their software. So we got it from GM. Given, we, did what we did. You can't just go in and unlock it like a cell phone. You have to get permission from them. And Tesla's not giving up permission to anybody to go into their software. Logically, though, given your technology being revolutionary um, and Tesla being the biggest EV out there, um, would it not be advantageous to try and find a way to work with Elon and maybe do EPA testing? Well, you know, let me say something to you, sir, so you can understand this, too. Man, I get calls from everybody. I get calls when people say they can walk you right into Elon Musk, okay? All they know of him. Uh, and then when you deal with him, you find out you wasted your time. So right now, we're dealing with what the, the low-hanging fruit thing that's going to take place right away. If Tesla at any point feel like they, they know the technology is out there, if Tesla comes to me and say they want me to do something, then I'll believe it. But I'm not wasting any more resources for people who are trying to ride the wagon and be, become famous by dealing with Elon Musk. I wouldn't even want those problems. That's not a day past somebody calling and asking to borrow money. I wouldn't even want to be in the position David's in. So any company that want it now, they'll be able to buy it and place it on their vehicles. That's the option, too. That's what the mass production is for. And uh, Tesla can buy it as well, and they don't have to provide us their uh, internal code. They can just buy the technology, and they do their plug and play and connect it to their technology. That's the opportunity that they have. But there's no need uh, crying wolf right now. Let the technology, uh, when it's ready in the boxes, and show the people uh, we're testing it. And I'm sure Tesla's going to come aboard and, uh, and many others. We know that for a fact. But right now, sir, we're going with what's going on right now, what's factual. We're not trying to impress anybody. I'm not trying to impress anybody. And I don't have no dog in the hunt with the investors or none of that. But I care for them. And I don't want people to lose no money. And uh, Mullins is giving me another opportunity, and I'm going to make the best of it. That's what I can tell you now. Okay? And I'm begging you guys, just ask David and his team. Whatever we do, show it to us if they're his investors. Not just and, the press. Sorry. Just show it. One, one question. Um, just humor me, I guess, if you want, uh, or just pretend I'm stupid. When you mention plug and play, what essentially is it being plugged into? Well, what I'm saying is plug it into the software and uh, clamping it down. Where they have the technology, it already has the clamps on it. You got to clamp it on the rods and so forth that's under the vehicle. And uh, that's very intermediate. It doesn't require you to go to uh, training for six months. They can do a two, three day orientation and learn how to do that. Okay. Now, I know there's some people out there trying to dissect the technology, but we're not going to go into that tonight because you wouldn't need me. But, however, uh, Mullers and uh, engineers, they know what it took. They helped me. So now Mullers want to say something, and they have the right to say it. But I'm not going to say it because that, that what we've done, the proof was done in Mullins' shop, and they know that it works. Any comments from that, let it come from Mystery Team. And nobody come back and say, Lawrence gave away uh, Mullen's secret. Okay? Lawrence, I have one more question. Uh, um, will EPA have to research the vehicles if this tech is uh, real and added? That means that uh, on the M3, we already have EPA certification. Will there need to be another EPA, uh, I guess, test and research with this, uh, with this technology? I would assume it would. That's why we're coming in and do it again, because uh, the EPA is not going to allow, I don't care if it's a, a battery or a, a lighting system or whatever. They have to see it and test it and make sure it's okay so nothing catches on fire or whatever. Otherwise, uh, that could be a huge liability for somebody, okay? So... That's why each of these companies that we work with, they have to do certain tests that they want done so they can show the EPA and other entities that they met the requirements for their vehicle. So I'm certain, being in the business, the EPA is going to want to do its own independent test. They don't care what Leroy said. They got to see it for themselves. So I think that's 
and David is paying for all of that. So it's not cost to be anything. So whatever test they want done, they have they got free will to do it. I'm just there to support, provide the technology, and uh, whatever they want to do, whether it's temperature tests, longevity, uh, whatever they want to do. You know, they might take it there and they end up keeping the car two weeks. I don't know. It's all about it's, uh, whatever the EPA wants. Another question is, uh, does Molin currently have an exclusive contract with this tech? And if not, is it going or is it going to cut ties uh, with other companies once uh, this contract or once he's in this contract? So well, it, right now there is no contract with with MA, correct? No, all the other companies I have are non-exclusive. There is a exclusive contract on the table, but no one has signed it. And so I can't tell you what it's going to be. That's a call for David, okay? So I, I don't have the answer to that question, okay? They may decide they just want to buy the units. I don't know. So that's why I want you, to, David to say whatever he wants to say. And I guess he'll put it in writing. And then I think he should be the one to represent to his investors what his intentions are. All right. Thank you. And then also uh, I'm getting this uh, question again, and I just want you to, uh, I guess, kind of go over it one more time. Uh, the uh, company that is doing the mass production, how will we get, um, I guess, uh, verification that, yes, it's happening? Um, you said you're going to contact them tomorrow. Them tomorrow. I'm going to speak with them tomorrow, okay? And uh, I'll let them represent whatever they want to represent, okay? Because I am is there a uh, them, huh? Is there a release date for this technology yet? Because if it is already being mass produced, I'm sure that it's out there. So is there a release date with the first, uh, I guess, install or something like that with any company? And I'm sure you can't say that, but is, is there a date out there already? Well, I don't want to get in no trouble, but we do have a tentative date for November. Okay. And I'm going to leave it at that. Whatever the CEOs of these companies want to make, make an announcement. Let it come from them and not me, okay? Once again, because I'm on the NDA, they need to speak, okay? And even David, he needs to speak, say whatever he wants to say, and not coming from me, because I don't want them one to miss screw what I screw what I say, and I don't want nobody to say that I'm a liar, okay? And speaking on mass production, so in our earlier conversation that we had, you mentioned that logos are on them. What yeah, what box logo? And all of that. Well, it's EV Global. Okay. Yeah. Awesome, and I am just going through the comments. There are still, <laughs> there's still a lot of comments coming, but uh, I mean, we kept you uh, long enough. I think I don't know if you have more time or uh, I'll take two more. Anything else? I'll take two more. <laughs> All right. Who wrote the the software and what software language is used? Do they need it to upgrade it? And I'm guessing he is talking about the software on the EMM tech. Well, I can tell you this here. That's out of my scope of jurisdiction. But uh, these were so these are professional software people with PhDs. They come and work for us, and I can tell you it's like rocket science to me. The way they done it, I don't have a clue, sir. So I'm not gonna get on here and tell you something that I don't I don't know anything about the software. And the reason they go in and unlock it so that it's like a gas hand. You can see everything that's going on, the distance, the mileage, uh energy input, energy output, all of that. I'm not that smart to do that. So and uh Mullins aware of those guys, okay? So if Mullins wanna represent something, I'd rather come from Mullins, okay? They was on Mullins. They you. was on Mullins' premises for months. Okay. Thank you. Financial, go ahead. Okay, uh, I do have a question. Uh, this one might be just very easy for you to answer, or kind of vague. But have you ever essentially been paid either directly or indirectly by, um, for instance, TD Ameritrade or Charles Schwab or, um, like, for instance, Fidelity? Have you been paid by ever to do? 
EPA to kind of talk on something? Have you ever been paid no. by those institutions? No. no, I don't know nothing about them, sir. That's what all honesty. If you talk to any of them, they've never had any discussion with me. Okay. Thank you. And uh, let me see. All right. So what is the turnaround time for EPA testing? Uh, you said you've done it before with different uh, vehicles or maybe for a different company or something like that. What is the EPA turnaround time for the, I guess, for the results to come in? Well, usually it's seven days, depending on what all you want. Uh, some people want, they want street testing. They want weather testing, cold weather testing. They can take it and turn it into weeks or months depending on the company, what they are, what they are looking for, you know? So, uh, once they do whatever test they want, usually they have a report ready within seven days, three, five days. I've never ever seen it go over seven days once the test is completed or completed. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. And I have no more questions. Financial journey. I don't know if you do. I see that Anthony wants to come up and I, uh, I kind of said uh, I, I'm not going to let up any speakers because if we do, then others will want to come up as well. And we just don't have enough time for that. But I will keep the space going and I will open it up for speakers to come up. Um, but uh, I, if you don't have anything else, uh, financial journey. Yeah, sorry. Um, I think one person's asking, maybe I might have missed the answer. I, I remember it being asked, but what was the cost per unit? Well, the, yeah. re the retail cost is $1,200. That's what they intend to sell it for. Uh, to the, to the well, company. Like, for instance, to the company. What's, the, what, what's your cost on that? Well, I don't think I want to say that, but just know that it has more than a 300% profit margin. Okay, because I remember you mentioned it in the past, so, and you did state that there was a 300% increase, so nothing's really changed based no. on that? Over, no. no. I think the manufacturer done a great job finding some good suppliers in the United States, you know? And is that manufacturer able to reduce costs at all by, or have you shopped around? Because I know initially you said Yeah, they said they're they going to work on that. They're working on, they working on that now, you know? Are they... Well, they can, they, the like they can reduce the cost. They can reduce the cost if they uh, take it out of the country. Of course, we know that that'll cut it probably sixty percent or more. But you got to understand too, when you're dealing with these companies and there's issues with customs and so forth, you don't want your product tied up at sea, thirteen, fourteen weeks or six weeks late. You want to be able to meet the production. If there's bad weather, there's a storm, you know, you want to deal with a company that has backup, that one obstacle will not shut it down and hurt customers' production. So I'm more comfortable uh, with keeping a USA manufacturer and since they have such a high profit margin. And and way we doing it, let me just say this to you. They want to have it like it's franchise. They don't want other manufacturers uh, producing the product. They want to keep it like a McDonald's or whatever, that everybody use the same parts from the same manufacturer so the quality and the integrity remains the same with each and every vehicle. And I, I respect that, okay? Thank you. And also, uh, I do see in the comments below, Tim uh, Lawrence is not here to be the voice for Mullen. Um, he is simply up here talking about his tech and other things, and we're just, uh, I guess, uh, questioning him. And he is uh, gracious enough to answer our questions, but he is not the voice for Mullen. That's right. And that's not why you're here, right? That's correct. <laughs> that's why I made it clear in the beginning and the ending and during this conversation. Uh, I can't speak on Mullen, okay? So with Thank you. Thank you so much. Go Thank you. 
All right. Th thank you so much for uh, joining us, for answering all the questions, for being here with us for so long. And uh, definitely, I think we should do this again next time and maybe have some people come up and, and ask questions. I mean, uh, we got to ask as many questions as we could, but uh, there's always people that want to ask themselves. And uh, hopefully next time. Uh, okay. Financial journey. All right. No, I appreciate it, Lawrence. Thanks for the clarity on a lot of the the stuff. All right, you guys have a great day.